level zero. Imagine looking up at the night sky. Most of the stars you see shining brightly, they're actually the minority. The true rulers of the cosmos are the quiet, unassuming M stars, better known as red dwarfs. They don't look like much, tiny, dim, often invisible to the naked eye, but here's the twist. They make up about 75% of all stars in the Milky Way. Statistically speaking, if you toss a dart into the universe, odds are you'll hit a red dwarf. Not that I'm recommending cosmic vandalism. These stars are the slow burners of the universe. While our sun is on track to live about 10 billion years, red dwarfs can keep glowing for trillions. That's so long, the universe itself hasn't even existed long enough for a single one to die of old age yet. They're basically the cosmic equivalent of that one friend who somehow makes their phone battery last three full days. But don't let the small size fool you. M stars can be nasty neighbors. They flare violently. Imagine a sudden outburst of radiation so intense it could fry the atmosphere of any nearby planet. For worlds orbiting these stars, that means a constant struggle. One moment, calm and steady warmth. The next, a stellar temper tantrum. And yet, red dwarfs are prime targets in the search for alien life. Why? Because they're habitable zones, the sweet spot where liquid water can exist, are, are nice and close in. Planets orbit tight and fast, giving astronomers plenty of chances to spot them. Famous candidates like Proxima Centauri b orbit red dwarfs, sparking endless debates. Are these worlds deadly cosmic microwaves or hidden oases of life? Level zero might seem tame, but these little stars hide secrets. And as we climb higher, the stars only get hotter, stranger, and far more dangerous. Level one. If M stars are the shy wallflowers of the galaxy, then K stars are the dependable, slightly underrated best friends. Not too flashy, not too faint. They're the cosmic just right option. Astronomers even call them the Goldilocks stars because they sit comfortably between the tiny red dwarfs and our medium-sized sun. These stars glow with a warm orange hue, cooler than the sun, but hotter than the dim red dwarfs. And here's the fun part. They live for tens of billions of years. That's several times longer than our sun's entire lifetime. Imagine the evolutionary stories that could play out on planets circling a K star. Civilizations could rise and fall dozens of times, and the star would still be shining away like, yep, I'm good for another 30 billion years. Scientists love K-stars for another reason. They're incredibly stable. Unlike the flare-happy M-dwarfs, K-stars don't throw tantrums quite as often. That means planets in their habitable zones are less likely to get blasted by deadly radiation. Translation, they might just be some of the best places in the universe to find life. In fact, one of the most famous stars in science fiction, Tau Ceti, is a K-star. It's been used in countless books, games, and even NASA studies as a stand-in for an alien sun. And guess what? Astronomers have found real planets orbiting Tau Ceti, though whether they're friendly neighborhoods or cosmic nightmares is still up for debate. So, if you're dreaming of a forever home in the stars, you might want to pick a K-star. Long-lived, calm, and steady, it's basically the retirement plan of stellar real estate. But as we climb higher, leaving the safe glow of K-stars behind, things start to look a little more familiar and a whole lot more intense. Level 2 Now we've arrived at the category of stars that feels the most familiar, because it's home turf. Our sun is a G-type star, sometimes nicknamed a yellow dwarf. Though, let's be real, it's not particularly yellow, and definitely not a dwarf by human standards. Call the sun small to its face, and it'll remind you that it's a million times bigger than Earth. G-stars are the ultimate middleweight champions of the cosmos. They burn hotter and brighter than the cozy K-stars, but they don't live nearly as long. A G-star typically lasts around 10 billion years, which sounds generous, until you realize our sun is already about halfway through its life. Yep, we're basically living on a middle-aged star. If it were a person, it would probably be buying reading glasses and complaining about its joints. But don't underestimate it. G-stars are engines of creation. Their steady light has powered entire ecosystems, birthed civilizations, and allowed planets like Earth to flourish. Without that delicate balance of heat and radiation, we wouldn't even be here to argue about Pluto's planet status. That balance, however, doesn't last forever. As G-stars age, they swell into massive red giants, engulfing nearby planets. For our sun, that means Mercury and Venus are doomed. And Earth might be swallowed too. Imagine the blue skies of our world turning into an endless, fiery red horizon. Many of the brightest stars in the night sky are G-stars, guiding explorers for centuries. 
But while they've been humanity's comforting beacons, their destiny is far more dramatic than peaceful. Because the next step up the ladder takes us to stars that shine whiter, hotter, and burn out much, much faster. Level 3. Now we're stepping beyond the comfort zone of our sun and into the domain of the F-type stars, hotter, brighter, and a little more dangerous. These are the sleek, white torches of the galaxy, radiating energy that makes our yellow sun look almost modest. At first glance, F-stars seem inviting. Their light is crisp and white, their systems often lined with dusty debris disks where new planets might be taking shape. They live for a respectable span, a few billion years, long enough for life to get started, but not quite long enough for civilizations to take their time. Around an F-star, evolution runs on a tighter deadline. But don't be fooled by their beauty. F-stars pump out far more ultraviolet radiation than our sun. For any planets orbiting in that so-called habitable zone, it's like living under a sun lamp that never switches off. Atmospheres can be stripped, oceans boiled, and life has to adapt or be erased. Worlds under these stars don't just survive, they struggle. You already know some of their names. Procyon A, a bright beacon in the winter sky, is an F star. And the legendary Polaris, the north star that guided explorers for centuries, is an F-type supergiant. But here's the twist. Polaris isn't steady at all. It pulses, its brightness waxing and waning like a cosmic heartbeat, reminding us that even the stars we think are constant are secretly alive with change. F-stars mark the turning point. They're brighter, harsher, and more short-lived than the stars we've seen so far. They're beautiful, but beauty at this level comes with sharper edges. And if you think these stars are intense, the next class, the A-stars, crank the danger and the brilliance up even higher. Level 4. As we climb higher up the stellar ladder, the stars become sharper, brighter, and far more unforgiving. Welcome to the world of A-type stars. Dazzling, white-hot beacons that dominate the skies with their brilliance. These stars blaze at around 7,500 to 10,000 Kelvin, nearly twice the temperature of our sun, and shine tens of times brighter. Their pure white glow is unmistakable, and some of the most famous stars in human history belong to this class. Take Sirius, the dog star, the brightest star in Earth's night sky. To the ancient Egyptians, the rising of Sirius marked the flooding of the Nile, the event that determined whether their crops and their civilization would thrive. To sailors, it was a guiding light across treacherous seas, and in modern times, it's still the star people notice first when they look up on a clear winter night. That's the power of a star's. They are impossible to ignore. Another example is Vega, once the North Star, now a standard by which astronomers have measured brightness for decades. Surrounding Vega is a dusty debris disk, the raw material for building planets. It's a reminder that while A-stars burn hot and fast, they are also cradles of creation. But here's the catch. A-stars live short, furious lives. Unlike the sun's comfortable 10 billion years, most A-stars only last about 1 to 2 billion years. For life, that's a serious limitation. Evolution may get started, but complex civilizations, the clock may simply run out too quickly. And these stars are not gentle parents. Their high ultraviolet output can strip atmospheres from nearby worlds leaving them barren wastelands. Any planet trying to hold on to life must withstand constant radiation and survive in the glare of a relentless sun lamp. Still, A-stars leave behind an unmistakable legacy. Their brilliance has guided explorers, inspired myths, and shaped the skies for cultures across the globe. They're stars of stories, but also stars of warning. Beauty here comes with a cost, because while they dazzle us with their brightness, their time is fleeting. They are the countdown clocks of the cosmos, burning bright, burning fast, and vanishing long before slower stars finish their first chapters. And beyond them, waiting in the wings, are stars even more ferocious, the B-type giants, so hot and powerful that they can sculpt galaxies with their fury. Level 5. Now we're entering the realm of the blue-white giants, the B-type stars. If the A-stars dazzled us with brilliance, B-stars overwhelm us with raw power. Their temperatures range from 10,000 to 30,000 Kelvin, and they shine tens of thousands of times brighter than the sun. These are stars that don't just light up their neighborhoods, they reshape entire regions of space. Look up on a winter night, and you'll see one of the best examples. Rigel, the bright blue jewel marking Orion's foot. Rigel is about 20 times the mass of our sun, and nearly 100,000 times as luminous. For thousands of years, cultures across the world used Orion as a celestial guide. But few realize that Rigel is living on borrowed time. Like all B-stars, its clock is ticking fast. Because here's the catch. B-stars live short, furious lives. While our sun enjoys a leisurely 10 billion year journey, a B-star might last only 10 to 100 million years. In cosmic terms, 
That's a blink. They burn so fiercely that they simply can't sustain themselves for long. And during that time, they wreak havoc on their surroundings. Bee stars unleash relentless stellar winds, streams of charged particles moving at millions of kilometers per hour. These winds carve apart nearby gas clouds, blasting cavities into nebulae while their intense ultraviolet light ionizes entire regions, making them glow like cosmic lanterns. The Orion Nebula itself is sculpted in large part by B-type giants, whose fury drives the birth of new stars. But the true legacy of B stars comes at the end. When they run out of fuel, they don't fade gently. They collapse and explode in some of the most spectacular supernovae the universe has to offer. In that final act of violence, they create and scatter the heavy elements that make life possible. The iron in your blood, the calcium in your bones, the oxygen in every breath, all were forged in stars like these. And some B stars, depending on their mass, leave behind even stranger corpses, neutron stars or even black holes, objects so extreme they defy imagination. B stars are cosmic paradoxes. They live fast and die young, but in doing so, they enrich the galaxy with the very materials that make planets and people possible. They are destroyers, but also the ultimate creators. And yet, as overwhelming as they are, B stars are not the final word. Beyond them waits something rarer, hotter, and far more terrifying. The O-type Titans, the most extreme stars in the universe. Level 6. We've climbed from the smallest embers of the universe to the brilliant giants, and now we stand at the very top of the scale, the O-type stars. These are not just stars, they are titans, monsters of light and heat, so rare that only one in every few million stars belongs to this class. And yet, despite their rarity, their influence shapes galaxies. An O-star blazes at temperatures above 30,000 Kelvin, with some pushing past 50,000. Their blue-white light is almost blinding, pouring out enough energy to rival hundreds of thousands of suns combined. If a single O-star replaced our sun, Earth wouldn't just be uninhabitable, it would be incinerated in seconds. But what truly sets O-stars apart is the way they dominate their surroundings. The ultraviolet radiation they emit is so intense, it carves entire nebulae into glowing sculptures. In star-forming regions like the Orion Nebula, just one O-star, Theta, one Orionis C, is strong enough to ionize the entire cloud, blowing gas into vast arcs and igniting the birth of countless smaller stars. These giants are the architects of galaxies, their fury sparking the very cycle of creation. And yet, their greatness is fleeting. O-stars live fast and die young, surviving only a few million years before collapsing under their own mass. Their deaths are among the most violent events in the universe, titanic supernovae that ripple across galaxies, or in some cases, direct collapses into black holes. From their explosions, the heavy elements essential to life are scattered. Iron for blood, calcium for bones, oxygen for every breath we take. Every part of us owes its existence to the fury of stars like these. Consider the cluster R136 in the Tarantula Nebula, home to some of the most extreme O stars ever observed. Some weigh over 300 times the mass of the sun, pushing the limits of what a star can even be before tearing itself apart. These giants may not live long enough to even see their galaxies change. They collapse almost as quickly as they form. O stars are the ultimate paradox. They are creators and destroyers, magnificent and terrifying. They are cosmic fireworks whose brilliance rewrites the sky, only to vanish almost instantly on the scale of eternity. From the smallest red dwarfs that will outlive the universe to these colossal titans that live for the briefest cosmic heartbeat. Stars are not just points of light, they are the storytellers of the cosmos, narrating creation, destruction, and the cycle of life itself. And at the very top, O-stars remind us that even the brightest flames burn the fastest. 